Hey everyone, do you know we have a special keyword in SQL called as lateral, which can be very useful in certain scenarios, especially when writing complex SQL queries. It is generally referred as lateral join, so a lot of people misunderstand it to be another type of join. But in reality, lateral is just a keyword that can be used along with your join conditions. Now in this video, let us completely understand what lateral is and how to use it. Let's start with a very simple example as you can see here. I have a very simple data set. It's about student and courses. So there are two tables. There's a student table which has information about the student ID, their name and the ID of the courses that they have enrolled in. Then I have a courses table which has information about the course ID and the course name. Okay. Now I want to write a query to display the student name and their enrolled course name. So for that I have written this query. Okay. Now what am I doing in this query is I am fetching the data from the students table and displaying the student name here. And then for the course title, I am basically using a subquery. In the subquery, I'm fetching the course title from the courses table. And what I'm doing is for every record that is processed from the student. So for each student, I want to take their enrolled course ID and match it with the course ID from the courses table. So this subquery here will basically execute for every record that is returned from the student table and for every record returned from the student table, it will return all the course title. So if a student has enrolled in multiple courses, multiple records will be returned. Okay. And then it should basically return the final output. And since I do not have any join condition between the subquery and the student table, I'm just using the condition as true. Okay. So which will work. Now, if I run this query, it's going to throw me an error and read the error message. The error message says invalid reference to the from clause entry for table. Yes. So basically telling that this is invalid. There is an entry for table. Yes, but it cannot be referenced from this part of the query. So basically what this means is inside this subquery, I am using a column from a table that does not exist within the subquery, but that exists somewhere outside the subquery in the main query here, right? Now this is not allowed. This kind of queries are not allowed. Now this scenario here, if I had to solve this problem, I really didn't need to use a subquery. I could solve it simply by using join, but here I'm showing you this for the purpose of explaining you lateral join. But there will be scenarios where you will need to write SQL queries and you will need to join it with sub queries. And you might have a scenario where you want to run the sub query for every record that is coming from one of your other tables that is present in the main query. Okay. In that case, lateral becomes very useful. Now, if I have to solve this problem, I just need to add the lateral keyword and everything will work. So currently SQL is not able to access any columns from a table that is not present in the subquery. If I want SQL to get that access, then I just mention the lateral keyword here. So I just mentioned the lateral keyword here. That's it. And now if I run it, you can see that it is working and the output is exactly correct. Okay. Now what basically happened was as soon as you mention the lateral keyword, what SQL will do is the subquery that is mentioned here, if it is using any column from a table that is mentioned before this join part. So before mentioning this subquery, if there are any different tables that is mentioned within that same from list, then any column from that table will be allowed to use in the subquery. Okay. That is basically what lateral join does. So if you want to use a column from a table that is not within the subquery, but that table is mentioned above like preceding your subquery, then you can do that by using the lateral keyword. That's it. That's the only functionality of lateral. Now, if you think carefully, this is very similar to something like a correlated subquery. In the correlated subquery also, you use a column from a table that is not within the subquery, but somewhere from the main query, right? So this is something similar, but of course there are differences, but because generally you use correlated subquery in your where clause. And here we are using this lateral uh, subqueries in the from list right now. Okay. So this one works and I hope you understand what lateral does, but this is, as I told you, this is not the best way to solve the problem because this problem could have been solved easily without using subquery. And how I can do that is I can just copy this. I'll just show you a better solution for this without using lateral join. And I can just do a simple join with the courses table. I'll call it C and my join condition can basically be this one. 
and I think the course title will come from the C table. That's it. If I run it, I'm getting the same output. So this query here also provides the same output. This also provides the same output. In honesty, this is 100% a better solution because there are no subqueries here. But this query I wrote it because I wanted to explain you what lateral join does. I hope you understand. Now this is a very simple example, but let's look at a more complex case where lateral can actually kind of make your query slightly better. Okay. Now for that, what I'm going to do is I have another data set and it's a customer orders data set. Now a quick update about the upcoming two live boot camps that I'll be starting in the next couple of weeks, starting from 2nd of August. The first boot camp is the Python beginner boot camp and the second one is the SQL interview prep boot camp. The Python boot camp, as the name suggests, is specifically designed for beginners. Anyone with no programming knowledge or have never written a single line of code, then this bootcamp is for you. We will be learning all the Python fundamentals. We'll be solving a lot of Python programs and we'll be doing a lot of Python mini projects. The second one is the SQL interview prep bootcamp, which is specifically designed for you to clear SQL interviews. All the concepts and topics that are required for you to clear interviews will be covered during this bootcamp. We'll be solving a lot of SQL interview problems, of course. So if you are interested in joining any one of these bootcamps or both the bootcamps, then all the details are present in the video description. So definitely check that out. Now let's get back into our lateral video. We have been given two tables. There's a customer table. It has information about four different customers. There is Alice, Bob, Charlie, and Diana. And then I have orders. There are 10 different orders that are basically ordered by these customers. So there is an order ID, the customer ID, the amount of the order, and the date when that order happened, okay? And you can see that different customers have done different orders, okay? Now what we need to do is, for each customer, return the order or orders where they spent more than their average order amount. Display the customer name, average order amount, and order ID. So what this basically means is, if there, for, so basically we need to know what is the average spending for each customer with regards to all of these orders. And if there are any orders where the customer spent more than their average amount, then return those orders. Okay. And when returning, you display the customer name, the average order amount and the order ID. Okay. Now I can solve it in two different ways. One, I can solve it using lateral, one without lateral. First, let me show you how to solve this with without using lateral. And then we will see can we simplify that query by using lateral, okay? So in order to solve this in the normal method, what I need is I want to find the average amount for each customer. So what I can do is I can just take the data from the orders table and because in the orders table, I have the customer ID. I can group the data for each customer. So I'll say group by the customer ID and then I can just display the customer ID and the average of the amount field, which I'll call it like average amount. Okay. If I just run this, now you can see that for each customer, I'm getting the average amount. That is fine. The next thing what I want to do is I want to use this average amount to arrive at my final output so that I want to compare it with the orders table to see if any orders have been more than this average for each customer. So I will need to put this into a CT. So I'm just going to use a CT here. I'll move this to the right. And then in my outer query or my main query, what I'll do is I'll say from the customers table because we need to display the customer name. So I will call it like C. I want to join it with the orders table because this is basically where we'll get all the orders. So I'll say O. I want to join the orders table with the customer table using the customer ID. So O dot customer ID equal to C dot ID. And I also want to join this CT so that I can get the average order amount, right? So for that, I'll say join CT on CT dot, I think the customer ID is equal to O dot customer ID. Okay. And then finally, I want to put a filter condition saying that where the, I think O dot amount, the order amount is greater than the average amount, right? So CTE dot average amount. And what I want to display is I want to display the customer name. I want to display the average amount. Let's say it's coming from the CT table. And then I want to display the order ID, right? That's it. 
And if I just execute this query now, you can see that I'm getting four records and you can see that for Diana, I'm getting two records because there are two orders which she did, which is greater than the average amount. Alice and Bob have one each, okay? And there's one more customer because we had four customers and that one customer is probably not in the output and I think it is Charlie because all of his orders are below the average amount. Okay, now this is a solution to this problem and this is fine, right? But we can also solve the same problem by using lateral and let's see how to do that. So basically what I want to do is I'll copy these two lines here. So because I want to join the customer and the orders table. Okay, and I'll say using lateral. Okay, and what I want to do now is I'm joining the customer table with the orders table. And instead of using a CT, what I will do is I'll straight away write a subquery here. And what I want to do in the subquery is I want to fetch the, basically find the average order amount for each customer. So in order to find the average order amount, I will just copy this, okay? And I'll put this here in the subquery, but here I'm already in the outer query, I'm already, when I whenever I execute this, it will process for one record at a time. So basically one customer at a time. So I already have the customer ID here. So in the subquery, I instead of using this group by, I can just put a condition saying that where, and I'll just call this like O2, let's say, O2 dot customer ID is equal to C dot ID, okay? And then here, I just want to display the average amount, okay? So what am I doing here is in the subquery that I have written here, I am fetching the amount from the orders table, but I am basically fetching it for each customer, that each customer that is being processed in the outer query, right? So for each customer, I am fetching the average amount and I'll get it here in this subquery. And I'll give a name for this, let's say as, uh, I'll call it like lat, okay, for now. And, and I think finally, because I'm getting the average amount here, I want to put the filter condition saying that uh, basically it will be the O dot amount should be greater than this average amount that I'm getting from this subquery here, right? Now, this is fine, but there's one problem. This query will not work because I am using a column in this subquery, which is coming from a table that is not within the subquery, right? So for that, I will need to use the lateral keyword, okay? And I will use that. And I'll move this to the right. And here I want to display all the fields. I think I can just copy this probably. So it's c.name, instead of ct, it will be called lat, and then I think that's it. So now if I run this, I'm getting an error, and I think it is because, okay, it is because I, used this subquery here, but I forgot to give the join condition. So I do not have a join condition because I'm just fetching the amount here. So I will put the join condition as on true, which will always work. So now if I run it, you can see that I'm getting the output again, the same output. So two orders from Diana and one each from Alice and Bob. Okay. So this query also returns the same output as this query. Okay. So basically there is no difference in the output. The difference is basically in the way how we have returned the two queries, okay? So if you see carefully, this query is slightly smaller than this query, okay? Now, some of you would argue that probably this is much simpler because probably you have never been familiar with lateral. But once you start using lateral and once you become familiar, you will realize that this is actually more simpler and more readable than this particular query, okay? Now, with regards to performance, it's not always ideal to use lateral because here for every record in the main query, you will be processing the subquery, but there will be certain scenarios in your, whenever you're writing some complex queries, where you will need to basically pass in a column from, in, from your outer table into your subquery. And in that case, you will need to use lateral. Okay, so that is it about lateral. It's in most cases, the query that you can write using lateral, you can also solve it without lateral, but there will be some complex scenarios where using lateral, it will kind of make the query more readable and 
more easier to solve okay so i hope you understood what lateral is and how to use it and i hope this video was helpful finally thank you so much for watching i hope you like this video i hope you like this background it's a video after a very long time so definitely support me give me a like if you like the video and leave a comment with whatever your thoughts are thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one very soon bye